Hey, it's Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. I am a master licensed diabetes educator, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and IFM certified in the practice of functional medicine. And I specialize in helping people to reverse the underlying root causes of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic dysfunction. I got a question the other day on a webinar that I was doing, and the person asked, is it possible for my blood sugar to go up on a low-carbohydrate diet? This is a common question and something that can be confusing to a lot of people. So let me answer that question right here. Before I unpack the answer, if you like my channel and you like these videos, make sure you give this one a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. You can also download a free guide called the Blood Sugar Manifesto. Just look in the description to this video below and you'll see a link where you can click on that and download the Blood Sugar Manifesto. So is it possible for blood sugar to rise on a low carbohydrate diet? And the answer is absolutely yes, it can happen, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. The main reason blood sugar goes up in some people when they start on a low carbohydrate diet, restricting carbs to say under 50 grams per day, is something called physiological or transient insulin resistance. Now, if you've been following my videos and my channel, I'm sure you know what insulin resistance is and you know that it's not a good thing in most situations. But there are some short-term transient situations where insulin resistance is in fact an important adaptive mechanism that the body uses to protect the fuel source of the brain, heart, and muscles. For example, during fasting, the body becomes physiologically insulin resistant. It's a transient adaptive state of insulin resistance, and it happens for a reason. The body wants to preserve available glucose for the brain. Now, the brain can burn glucose as well as ketones. In a normal fed state, when you're eating, the brain will burn almost exclusively glucose. But in a long-term fasted state, the brain can shift its energy sources to burn up to 70% of its energy from ketone bodies. That happens gradually over days. And on a very low carbohydrate diet, ketogenic diet, the brain will shift to burning some percentage of ketones for its energy source as well. But even in the extreme cases of long-term fasting, the brain still needs some glucose And so the body will preserve that glucose for the brain and the muscles and heart, for example, will burn more ketones. Another state of physiological insulin resistance is when you exercise. When you exercise, your muscles don't technically need insulin to take up glucose. So glucose levels can be diminished and the brain wants to protect, again, the brain's source of fuel. So it will increase the level of insulin resistance systemically. So much like these two scenarios, when you go on a low carbohydrate diet and restrict carbohydrates, incoming carbohydrates through your meals, the body notices that glucose levels are starting to decrease and it wants to preserve available glucose for the brain. Now, depending on how low carb you go, you may or may not shift into nutritional ketosis. The lower carb you go, the greater the level of this transient or adaptive insulin resistance because a very low carbohydrate diet becomes a ketogenic diet and that almost mimics a fasting state. Glucose levels are going to fall and your body is going to want to preserve glucose for the brain. Now, as we become insulin resistant systemically, that's going to affect the liver as well as the muscles and fat cells. And so the short term transient insulin resistance in the liver can have the effect of allowing glucose levels, fasting glucose levels to come up slightly. We're not going to see a huge increase in fasting glucose, but it can be anywhere between 3 and 10 milligrams per deciliter. If you're used to seeing your blood sugar at 85, it may go up to 95. 
And that can be concerning for a lot of people, but a short-term blood sugar elevation like that in a fasted state is not dangerous. It's nothing to be concerned about. And this is not harmful pathological insulin resistance, which leads to things like high blood pressure, high insulin, and metabolic dysfunction. This is a temporary, short-term, transient, adaptive state. It's something the body's doing on purpose, and the body will reset once it feels like it has enough glucose available for the brain. What we see in many of our patients and clients that follow a long-term, low-carb, or even ketogenic diet is that this transient insulin resistance eventually does fade. The body becomes better at producing glucose endogenously internally in the liver. The body becomes better at burning fat. The body becomes better at upregulating ketogenesis and producing ketones. And we'll gradually see that elevation in fasting glucose start to drop. Now, it is possible still to have a slight increase in fasting glucose long term, but it's very minor. And again, nothing to worry about. I just want to reiterate, we do not see any negative consequences from the short term transient insulin resistance associated with low carb or ketogenic diets. There's no pathological mechanism, there's no inflammation, there's no cardiovascular stress, there's no rise in blood insulin levels, there's no elevation in blood pressure, there's no retention of fluid or electrolytes, we don't see any change in lipid levels like a dyslipidemia. So again, we don't worry about it at all, but it can cause, at least in the short term, and potentially even mild long-term elevations in fasting glucose levels or blood sugar levels. Is there anything you need to do about it? Not really. It's not harmful. It's natural. It's adaptive. It's the intelligence of your body doing it. And so we really don't want to fight against that. The only suggestion I would have is after a few months, I do think it's a good idea to cycle carbohydrates. So I would not recommend staying on a very low carbohydrate diet or energy restricted diet continuously long term. We typically recommend doing maybe six days on and one day or one meal off or maybe two weeks on and one day and or one meal off off meaning you're increasing your healthy whole food carbohydrates a little bit you don't have to eat a high carbohydrate day but maybe you go up to 100 or 120 grams of carbs for the day from healthy starchy vegetables beans legumes or maybe a little bit more low glycemic fruit that will help reduce the stress on the adrenals and the liver, and it'll help break this cycle of physiological insulin resistance, this adaptive insulin resistance. All right, so I hope you found that helpful. Again, this is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach. If you need some help with your blood sugar, first check out my blood sugar manifesto. You'll find a link in the description to this video below. There's some information in there to help you find and address the underlying root causes of high blood sugar and metabolic dysfunction. Please, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back on my next video.